Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Let's lift our hand to heaven this morning and appreciate God one more time for this privilege we have to be in his presence. He has been blessing us from the start of Shiloh. We saw him conclude yesterday in a unique way. Lord, we thank you. Our purpose for this morning is to appreciate you. We have come to give you glory and honor and adoration. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of praise. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks and we praise you for all that you have been doing for us. We don't take it for granted. We are here again in your presence this morning. Give everyone here a blessing. Turn everyone here to a living testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big hand. And you may please take your seat in God's presence. I count it a great privilege to stand upon this exalted altar. Privilege that came from God through his servant, my father. And I trust God that the spirit of just men made perfect will be at work here today in the name of Jesus. You believe it, shout a louder, Amen. Amen. Today is our Shiloh Thanksgiving service. The Bible makes us to understand in Psalm 47 and verse 7, it said, Praise the Lord with understanding. Nothing can be done well until it is done with understanding. Nothing can be done acceptably only until it is done with understanding. And nothing can be distinguished until it is done with understanding praise ye the lord with understanding it means without understanding there will be something that will be outstanding something will be lacking something will be missing but with understanding nothing is missing i pray today that as we celebrate and thank god in his presence None of the blessings of thanksgiving will be missing in your life. You believe it, shout aloud, amen. amen. In Psalm chapter 92 and verse 1, the Bible said, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. So according to scriptures, thanksgiving is a good thing. But it's important for us to know that it is not only good, but thanksgiving is a necessary thing. It is a necessary thing. It is a compulsory thing. He said, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. So which means it is a bad thing to withhold thanks from the Lord. I heard God's servant and father say through, during Shiloh, he said that the intensity with which we used to seek God we must use the same to thank God. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 verse 13, it said, you shall seek for me and you shall find me when you search for me. With what? With all your heart. And the Bible also tells us in Psalm 103 verses 1 and verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. So you ask him with all your heart. And you thank him with all that is within you. Seeking God takes all. But thanking God must also take all. When you're thanking God lacks some. Then your blessings from God will also be lacking some. Seeking God takes all, but thanking God will also take all. And I pray today that as we thank him with all of our heart, whatever is the portion that belongs to you that is yet to be in your hand shall be delivered speedily to you. But why Shiloh Thanksgiving? Why are we thanking God? Why are we thanking God? 
Number one is God deserves it. God does what? God deserves it. Psalm 145 verse 3, the Bible said, Great is the Lord and therefore greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord. And the praise must also match his greatness. Our thanksgiving must always match our word of God. The truth is this. What God is worth to you is what determines the weight of your praise. Our thanksgiving is a demonstration of the worth of God to you. The worth of God to you. There is a scripture that caught my attention in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 1 and verse 2. We saw Abraham in that scripture. And Abraham had a visitation from God, particularly in verse 1. And he said, and these th things, the word of the Lord came, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision. And said unto him, fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and your exceeding great reward. In other words, you are looking for a child, but I am what you need. Because if you have me, you have children. You are looking for a miracle, but I am what you need. So celebrate me, and then everything that is in me will come to you. I am your exceeding great reward. So thanksgiving is appreciation of the worth of God. Celebration of the worth of God to you. Giving him praise according to his size. Giving him praise according to his weight. One of the things that we hear as worship and thanksgiving in heaven, if you read the book of Revelations, you keep hearing worthy, 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 worthy. And that means, Lord, you deserve it. Worthy really means what the, what the. This praise is what the, Lord. This glory is what the. This thanksgiving is what the. We are actually saying, Lord, it is what you. So whatever God is worth to you is how much your praise must weigh with you. How much your thanksgiving must weigh with you. And I pray today that somebody here will demonstrate the worth of God in his or life. And by reason of that, whatever is left that belongs to you shall be released in your direction. I thought you'd be shouting a louder amen. Number two reason why are we thanking God for Shiloh is because God demands it. God demands it. God demands it. Christianity is a race of responsibility. Until you recognize what God demands, you cannot make demands on God. God demands it. The Bible said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3, and also chapter 2 and verse 13, we are bound to give thanks. So it is, it is, we are, we are, we are, we are bound to give him. We are in debt to give him thanks. So thanksgiving is a demand from God. It is not a suggestion from God. In Malachi chapter 2 verses 1 to 3, this commandment is for you, O ye priests. If you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, I will curse your blessings. And I have caused them already because you did not lay it to heart. This commandment, not this suggestion. So thanksgiving is a commandment. It is not, a, it is not an assignment with an option. It is an instruction from heaven. Which when it is withdrawn, has certain consequences. And I pray that the consequences of ingratitude will never be found in any life here. In the name of Jesus Christ. God demands it. God demands it. Number three reason why it is necessary for us to give God thanks is that he is the invisible hand behind the visible happenings. He is the invisible hand behind the visible happenings behind what man can see is a god that no physical eye can see behind what man can see in the same way that you don't see the wind but you see the trees blowing 
It's in the same way that you don't see God with your natural eyes, but you see the effect of God. And the effect of God is seen in the testimonies of men. And even if you didn't hear anything before, the testimonies in this service alone are enough for you to see the hand of God at work. One of us said, God used exceeding grace to transport me into heaven on earth. I have been at a certain level for a certain number of years. And by appraisal, I was said to stay in the same level. But I cried unto God and heaven on earth manifested. And then instead of becoming a deputy, I became a director in a federal government parastata without lobbying. If there was no lobbying, then there was a God at work. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The invisible hand was behind the visible happenings. We saw this year in Shiloh, as was said in the announcement, over 5 million people gathered at Shiloh. That is outside of those that were in physical centers. That is outside of, outside of people who might have seen it on television. That is outside of individuals that might have been rebroadcasted on other websites. Outside of people who gathered as congregations in places that we are not aware of. That was God fulfilling the word he gave in 1982. That millions shall soon be gathering. But even without a physical billboard anywhere, the Holy Ghost began to blow the wind of the Spirit. And men from everywhere began to gather, began to gather, until we have now seen millions, not one, not two, not three, not four, but over five million people gathered to hear the word of God. Is God not worthy of praise? I said, is God not worthy of praise? If he is, say with me, thank you, Father. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 15 as, as well as verse 24, the Bible tells us there, he said, that which your mouth has spoken, your own hand has performed. That which your mouth has spoken. God's servant said to us prophetically, among the four prophetic pointers, he said, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. And one of those nights here, over 500 instant miracles on the spot, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. The mouth of God spoke it, but the invisible hand of God commanded it. Does God not deserve our praise? Say with me, Father, I thank you. Like you mean it, Father, I thank you. One of us testifying today said, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And that word he spoke was the real code of what God's servant has been saying. He said, any man that is not grateful is a great fool. He's a great fool. It is foolishness to be ungrateful. It is foolishness to be ungrateful. The hand of God is what makes every visible thing we have seen happen. The hand of God. You cannot explain it any other way. It is inexplainable except for the hand of God. Are you grateful to God with me this morning? If there was a word that was spoken and was, was confirmed, it is because God was at work. Lamentations 3, 27, 3, 37. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 37. He said there, he said, who, how, he said, he said 37. He said, who is it that saith and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? In other words, whatever you have seen fulfilled was the mouth of God that spoke and the hand of God that performed. God's servant speaking earlier to us in one of the services at the closing said, <laughs> he said there was no way to even be praying that you will see million Ghana, millions. It, it was outside of the scope of being able to start praying about it. You will see millions gather. No, there was no way to start praying it. It was so unfathomable. But what was unfathomable did not mean it would be impossible. Because there is a God of all possibilities whose hand has the capacity to invite people without invitation card. Whose hand has the capacity to call people without radio jingles. Whose hand has the capacity to advertise himself without any individual hand. That God was the one who, who, who brought people. One of us said, people invited her, she rejected. She refused. 
rejected the invitation. But God invited her by herself. And she's here with a miracle. To God be all the glory. Is God worthy of your praise now? Say with me, Father, I thank you. Number four. Number four reason why we are thanking God is that he is the performer of all the signs and wonders that we saw. All the signs and the wonders that we saw. Every sign and wonder we saw was practical demonstration of the hand of God. He was the one that performed it. Mark 16, 20. They went everywhere and preached. God also walking with them. Perf you know, um, confirming the word with signs following. Men can preach, but only God can heal. Men can preach, only God can save. Men can preach, only God can break bondages. Everything that we saw as signs and wonders were a product of the clear intervention of God. And for that reason, we owe him thanks. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In Acts chapter 19, verses 10 and verse 11. Acts 19, 10 and verse 11. The Bible tells us there, he said that as Paul continued the ministry, he said, after a while, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken. And then they went healing the sick. But it was not Paul that was healing them. He said, God did special miracles. Who did it? God. So any miracle we saw, was actually the hand of God. Any sign and wonder we saw was practically the hand of God. He was the performer of all the signs and wonders. In John chapter 14 and verse 10, we see how Jesus explains it to us here. He said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me, and the words that I speak, I, that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So the works that we saw was actually the work of God. The works that we saw was actually God at work. It came to a point that even, the, you know, the, the Pharisees realized that it was impossible for Christ to do what he was doing without God being with him. The truth is this, even the, the wicked knows that it is impossible for the things that are being done here to be done if God was not here. Even the wicked know. The hand of God is so clear in the evidence of signs and wonders that we experience. And for that reason, we owe God all the thanks. Now, what are we thanking God for? What are we thanking God for? Number one, we are thanking him for massive salvation of souls. For massive salvation of souls. The Bible makes it clear in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Salvation is actually escape from all other things. And we saw God translate many in escape from darkness to light all through Shiloh. Multitudes, thousands were translated. In Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. The Bible said there is joy in heaven for every soul that is brought into the kingdom. Every sinner. There is joy in heaven. Every time one person is brought to God, heaven is jubilating. Now thousands and thousands and tens of thousands were brought to Christ. Imagine how heaven is in rockers now. Because of the mass of souls that were brought into the kingdom. This is so important because no man can ever come to God except the Father draws him. It is not language that draws souls. It is not oration that wins souls. It is the conviction of God that wins one soul unto God. Are you grateful to God for the winning of souls? In all of the sessions, we saw souls won. Not only in the services, in the main services, in the specialized liberation services, in the, in the, in the encounter night, every season, the youth forum, souls were being won in their masses to God. Why? Because God was the one drawing them. And that is why we owe him thanks. Please make no mistake about it. We saw thousands that came to Christ, but not one of those thousands were brought to Christ by any man. They were all brought by God. And that is why all of us in unison must begin to celebrate that God for bringing those multitudes into his kingdom. Say with me, Father, I thank you. Number two, 
reason why we are th what we are thanking God for is for his wondrous works in our lives is for his wondrous works in our lives in in Psalm chapter 78 verse 40 to verse 72 when you get home take time to read that scripture the Bible shows us there how that God God the, the children of Israel forgot the hand of God through which he brought them through the wilderness and did marvelous signs and therefore devastation became the result of their life. You see, I've said it this way, that if you forget God's hand, then you'll be forgotten by God's hand. If you forget God's hand, you'll find yourself forgotten by God's hand. In other words, God's intervention will be lacking when you refuse to celebrate his previous interventions. We must therefore understand that his wondrous works are reasons for us to thank him psalm 103 verse 2 he said bless the lord and forget not his benefits forget not forget not forget not the wondrous works that we saw he said forget it not forget it not because if you forget it you may be forgotten forget it not forget it not shout hallelujah so we are thanking him therefore for the wondrous works very quickly now, what are the benefits of thanksgiving? When I thank God, what is the benefit? Number one, thanksgiving is a spiritual preservative for our blessing. Is what? It's a spiritual preservative for our blessing. Now we recognize that in the natural anything that will last long requires preservative particularly perishable materials if you buy tomatoes within a few days it is rotten it turns from a blessing to a curse what should nourish your body becomes poison to your body why because it has not been preserved but when you buy thin tomatoes one year later you are still cooking soup with it and it is still nourishing your body why because it has been preserved the blessing that is not preserved will become a curse. The blessing that is not preserved will become a curse. In Malachi 2 verse 1 to 3, this commandment is for you, O ye priests, if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name. He said, I will curse your blessing. The blessing will become rotten in your hand because of absence of thanksgiving. Let us understand, people of God, that thanksgiving is what preserves blessing. I observed in looking at the book of Numbers, something very peculiar happened. The children of Israel began to cry unto the Lord for quails. As soon as the quails came, they wanted meat. They said, we are tired of eating this manna. And then, as soon as the quails came, instead of them to give God thanks, first thing they grabbed it, just put it in their mouth and tore it. And the Bible said, as while the meat was in their teeth, the anger of the Lord was kindled. And then immediately, what should have nourished their blessing, their body became a cost to them. Please understand that every blessing is reversible. But the preservative of your blessing is thanksgiving. Now note this. If tomatoes can be preserved for years by natural preser preservative, then spiritual blessings can be preserved for eternity by spiritual preservative. When you pour thanksgiving on your blessing, that blessing lasts forever. The Bible said, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. He said, whatsoever the Lord do it, it shall be forever. Let me say it this way. You may start with blessing, but the blessing will not last without thanking. You may start with blessing, but the blessing cannot last without thanking. Number two benefit of thanksgiving is that it is the key to perfection of our blessing. It's the key to perfection of our blessing. In Luke chapter 17 verse 11 down to verse 19, 10 lepers came to Christ. And these 10 lepers according to him, Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed, but one came back. And when he came back, Jesus said, were they not nine? That were cleansed. Where are they? Where are not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? He said, None has come back except this stranger. And he said, Go, be down whole. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has completed it. Your thanksgiving has made it complete. Now, hear this what God will give you first is not his best. 
it is never his best what gives you god what god gives you first is a taste it's not his best it is a taste to see whether you will thank and when you thank he gives you his best it is a taste to see whether you will thank and when you thank god gives you his best now note this james chapter 1 and verse 17 and we close with this scripture he said every good and perfect every good and perfect notice good came before perfect good came before perfect god will give you good first and then watch you when you celebrate him then he gives you perfect that means that whatever you receive from shiloh as you thank god today god is giving you the perfection in the name of jesus christ in your seated position lift your right hand to heaven and say father i thank you one more time louder father i thank you praise the lord let's understand this as i close this morning that only the living can praise god any man that is not in christ his song is a noise to god his clap is a noise to god his dance is a nuisance to god only the living if you are here you don't know jesus you don't have a personal relationship i didn't say whether you attend church but you know you don't have a personal relationship with god or you are here and you did have a relationship with god but somehow that relationship was broken sin came into the way something disconnected you from god but you want to be back in any of those two categories rise your feet very quickly all over this place give jesus a big hand give jesus a big hand rise on your feet all over this place you say, I want to have a personal relationship with God. Very quickly, give Jesus a big hand for them. Rise up very quickly. Rise up very quickly. Let nothing hold you back. Let nothing hold you back. I want to have a relationship with him. Or you are here, you said, I had one, but I want to restore it. Rise on your feet too. Don't let anything hold you back. This hour is your hour. God brought you just for this. Are you clapping for Jesus, everybody? Give him a big hand. Hallelujah. For everyone that has risen upon your feet, please take a bold step of faith and just step into the aisle. Or meet the officials there. Very quickly, please step into the aisle. Step into the aisle. And we pray together there. Step into the aisle. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus hallelujah praise the lord now in the aisle i'd like you to please stop filling your forms for a moment and lift your right hand up to heaven everyone lift up lift your right hand up to heaven and make this confession of faith after me say after me lord jesus say it louder lord jesus i come to you today i know that i'm a sinner but i know you died for me and on the third day you rose again jesus come into my heart cleanse me with your blood write my name in the book of life today i know that i am born again i'm a child of god i will serve you forever in jesus name keep your hands up as we pray father i thank you for these precious ones that you brought into your kingdom let the same grace that has brought them keep them let it establish them in you until the last day give each one of them experience of heaven on the earth in the name of jesus christ thank you mighty god in jesus precious name you believe god shout aloud amen, amen. please complete your forms and hand it to the officials beside you and then take your seat back where you are give jesus a big hand everybody